to Quok Talk. Today, we're going to talk about some sticky issues again. Now, when it comes to gender and sexuality, as you know, today, it's just an um, oversensitive issue. And why is it oversensitive? Why are people n not comfortable talking about certain issues that perhaps people don't want to identify with? And speaking of identity, how is it when a person realizes that they are not in a particular um, gender identity that they're comfortable with? And, you know, the concept of coming out, what does that mean? It's so loaded, yeah? We always think, oh, what was your aha moment of coming out? It's that simple. So we're going to talk to a wonderful guest today to kind of unpack what it means to um, be transgendered and to feel the need to kind of, you know, own up to who you are. So join us now as I introduce my guest. PhD candidate in American Studies, Ava Ladner. Welcome, Ava. Thank you. Um, now, so it's quite complicated and interesting that we've titled you under your um, PhD student affiliation, and yet you're coming on on behalf of talking about your identity. Tell me what the crossover is between okay, so those there is two. A, there is a connection between the two, shall we say. Um, because it was in a class that I actually like began the aha moment, shall we say. Okay. Um, and it was in a gender and sexuality class. And it was one of those when I got to a certain text and we were going through it and I was like, wait a minute. Um, and it kind of had led back to like clues that I've left myself throughout my life and like my own questioning of things and like how I'd approach some things. Uh -huh. And like as an undergrad, I remember hanging out in a certain part of the library looking for information and I like kept going through aspects and I was like, that's not me, that's not me. And part of it is the vocab wasn't there at the time. Um, right. So part of it is the development of the vocab and the research and the things to kind of enunciate these things better. And I think that's helped a lot of people as far as coming out, but not just, shall we say, trans, but like all kinds of different aspects of sexuality and gender. Right. Um, do you think it's something about the trend of the times that kind of helped um, bring it all together and surface? Do we just say? Trend of the time. Like if you want to say access to information, absolutely. Okay. So like aside from the internet, just the fact that there is more scholarship in this area, right? This is not in the early 90s that was starting, but yeah. it really comes out in the, I'd say mid-aughts is like when we get the flourish, right. um, like Susan Stryker and other people are starting to release books that really deal with this. Um, we get Jennifer Boylan writing about her experiences, these type of things, and it's like, those are the moments that actually kind of really catapult it. Yeah, and yeah. bring it out But further. you know, you're, I mean, I had to say, I'm not going to age you, but that's quite late for you to come out. A lot of people Fine. come out during their, um, <laughs> you know, sexual awakening. Um, yeah, like puberty or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Did you, you must have had moments growing up and, and... Yes. Okay, so how much did that kind of trigger or was it suppressed because of your background? I know you do your research is in the South and you are from the South and things that kind of suppressed who you are. I'm both from the South and the North. Um, okay. Tell us about that. You're, you're right, so I grew up in Philadelphia. After I graduated high school, I moved south. Okay. Um, but I was in Miami first, and then Georgia. Uh huh. Um, so the North would suppress it in one way, or repress it, or like I would repress it, uh -huh. and then in the South, same kind of thing, where it's like I didn't necessarily belong there to begin with. Right. Okay. Because um, I was very familiar with the question of "You're not from around here, are you?" Yeah. Um, <laughs> now that's a southern accent. Yeah. Um, and it was like, right, I'm not from around here. So like to add that other element would have been extremely, I think, taxing in a lot of ways. Um, right, to be trans so that northern be and in the south. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, right. So I think those type of things really kind of pressed it down. But like I went through the, you know, you're supposed to be a boy, grow up a boy, you know, play football. Those type of things. Your parents had a lot of kind of direction? That was the it? expectations. And I'd say like both societal and family construct. Yeah, yeah, okay. So when you say the aha moment, going back to your adult life, yeah, right. Was Took it a something while. that? <laughs> so all the time before then, did you not embrace who, or did, that must have been very um, frustrating to yes. not own up to who you think you are. Yeah. So like one of the things I kind of laugh about is like I, I'm a good actor because oh. I acted the part for so many years, but the whole time I was like trying on different things, trying to be like, okay, there's something not quite right. So you dared not wear dresses and all these things until you... That's what's, so that's one of the funny elements. Like before I came out, I'd started to... Okay. And I was comfortable in them, but I didn't, like I hadn't necessarily embraced my own sense of femininity. Okay. Um, and all like this... I, I was still very much like 
In costume, shall we say? Ah, okay. Can we like <laughs> break it down for people who have no clue or kind of like are just wary of this whole trans world? It's an awesome mess. Go for it. Is it okay? So let's like, <laughs> what's the difference between transsexuality, transgender, transsex? Well, transsexuals when you actually have the sexual exploration, is that right? Well, so trans, yeah. So here we go. So okay. like intersex, you're born with both male parts and female parts. Okay. And, and that's where we've seen like. A, Experiments go wrong is in the past as far as like a person does the operation. Yeah, they have an operation and they like try to force somebody into being a girl or a boy, and right? It, and it goes poorly, yeah. and it like you can't force a person. To, that's what they've discovered basically. Um, so intersex is being born with both. Transsexual is like um, comes later. <laughs> is okay. the better way to say it? Um, but it mainly deals with the body in certain ways. So gender deals with identity. So it's not what's between your legs, it's up here. Well, yeah, up here. Right. Is well, it here? Yeah, right. Either way you want to put it. Heart and mind? Yeah, but not down there. This is what people <laughs> kind of assume. Like, okay, so, oh, you have a penis, so you're a guy. It's that simple. Right. And like, um, like I'm thinking of a scene from the show Pose. I don't know if you Solid. Well, yeah. it was on last summer. Um, FX's show Pose by uh -huh. Ryan Murphy it was uh -huh. really awesome because it put trans women of color as like at the forefront. Okay. And like one of the comments was like this one woman says to a trans woman, she's like, "But you're a woman," and like she responds by saying, "Well, thank you." But then the other woman realizes that like she does have the genitalia of a male, and right. like. She's confused by that. Okay. Um, and it's like, yeah, so like I'm thinking of like one of the Twitter things is like some women have penises, that type of thing. Um, and some men have vaginas. So it's like that type of thing exists. It's almost two different levels and sometimes they overlap, but sometimes they're completely separate. Right, it's a mess. <laughs> <laughs> so was there any, um, were there any thoughts in your process in wanting to change sex? Physically, biologically? Well, I mean, in some ways I have because I'm on hormones. Okay. So, like, obviously, I didn't have breasts before. Okay. Um, skin changes, those like type of things. Like, big operations. Right, but the, the, thing that the people... confirmation surgery. Yeah. Um, no, because, like, I don't have that kind of whatever toward my body. Like, some people really hate that part of their body. Oh, okay, okay. And I'm just like, eh. Okay, but so you can we get into, like, <laughs> but, your. But, but I'll go with the fact that I've thought about an archaeectomy, which is removing, is that what of, it's the called? removing of the testicles. Okay. Oh. That's specific. <laughs> yeah, so orchiectomy is removing that aspect. Oh, because of the, the testosterone that's being produced by it. That part, and also like part of its aesthetics. Okay. Like it's easier to wear certain things with, right. without that part well, of the body. Well, you wear pants all the time? Well, come yeah, on now. I see you in skirts mostly. I don't actually ever yeah. see you in see, pants. Right? Yeah. Skirts, dresses. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, um, <laughs> you have a steady partner. Yes. So, <laughs> because you don't have a sex change, but you identify as female, like, how do you have sex? Hmm. I like, do know. you have sex as a male? I don't think about it that way. Okay, see, that's <laughs> why I need to get out of my binary thinking, and I'm probably asking it the wrong way, but I'm just... No, no, so, like, um... I mean, I'm not asking no, no, for details. Let, no, no, no. <laughs> I kind of am. I think there's, a, I think there's a, uh, one of those aha moments in that. So... I think it was the first time we were getting physical. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, okay, it wasn't the first time, but we'd gotten more intimate. Yeah. And it taken a little right. while and all right. that. Um, and the, it was the first time she took off my bra. Okay. And started fondling my breasts. But she knows you as who you are, yeah, right? Yeah. Right. She doesn't think any like the wrong. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, and that was like, and that was like, whoa, totally different. Wait, can I just like, interrupt right totally now? Sorry, I just need to do a disclaimer for people who think this is um, inappropriate for uh, young children. Just tell them to go in their room for a little while because we're talking about sexual issues, adult matter. Okay, just saying. All right, go ahead. Yeah, um, yeah. That first moment yeah. of like actually being touched like that like blew my mind. It was like, oh, to be appreciated. In that so you regard. never had that before, right? You never had a relationship with a female before. No, I've had relationships with females before, but I've never had them approach me like a female. As, oh, that's so interesting. Right. So like that kind right. of touching was different. Right. And everything about it has been different. Okay. So in a lot, like I like to joke that I was like a virgin again. Huh. Okay. So then because, <laughs> okay, now that. <this, laughs> go for it. <laughs> because you still have the male genital, do you still penetrate or 
Mm, yeah. Is it not? It's, yeah, but, but then, it's been weird. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a blurry area, right? Yeah. Because you think about, you know, you, you, you embody female, and yet there are parts of you that are kind of contradict that. Absolutely. Right, and like the like presentation stuff like that. Yeah. Right. Once again, like your the comment on the clothes I wear. Yeah. Right. They have to navigate that too. I noticed. As as you know, the, it was in my class <laughs> in in a history class right now. She sits next to me, and she I always notice she wears these different nice skirts, but she gets male men's shoes on. And I was thinking about that, like, is it because you can't find shoes your size? Yes. Okay. So okay, my feet are huge. Just, <laughs> what size are your feet? Fifteen or sixteen. Oh my so, like, so even as a guy, you you yeah, wouldn't actually, have I to struggle, find shoes. Right, yeah. So I can't find cute shoes. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah, drawback. Um, that is one area where I struggle. It's all right. So, okay. I do have a couple that I found over the years, but, like, it's really difficult, actually. The shoes yeah. are one of the things where I get frustrated. <laughs> I would totally, I, I would sympathize with you because I, I would think. Especially when you're wearing, <laughs> like, a good dress, a dress or something. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Right. So, um, how do you want people, you know, people just don't know what to make of um, this blurry area in sexual identity. How do you want, pe what do you want people to know of you? Okay, so, like, I think one of the things that's, like, it works with me is, like, I'm, I'm not hyper femme, right? Like, I'm not right. trying to be, like... Yeah, you're not, like, totally, The hee-hee like, girl, right? Oh, like, gosh, um, it's kind of annoying, no offense, to those who are. But there are some that that's where their version of femininity lies. Yeah. And I don't, like, mine's like, no, like, you can be a normal... Normal what? Like, I just see, I think of, like, strong women and things like that, right? Like, yeah. I don't, I think of classmates, so. Right. They're not, like, trying to be all hee-hee. Right. Um, but, like, some people think, like, if they see me, though, it's just, like, a feminized male, right? And it's, like, I think that's where the line gets blurry yeah. in a certain way. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Um, so it's not just, so there's the layer of the pure sexuality, the kind of the biological component, and then there's the layer of how we present ourselves and how we dress to identify ourselves. And yeah, then, and the, I mean, let's go back to the sexual aspect yeah. of saying, like, so I prefer women. Right, cis right. Cis women. So cisgender, right? Like, those were born and agree with their gender. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, I'm learning, um, I'm learning. Yeah, so... <laughs> I prefer them, uh -huh. but obviously there are trans women that prefer men, and then there's trans people that prefer trans people, and like all this mess, and it's a fun stew. Have you ever slept with a male before? No. Okay. And you never even had like kind of um, experimental, so that you know that this confirms, ah, this is not what I want? I, I never even like... I, Anytime I think I got close enough, I was like, I it's already not, knew. Yeah, it, yeah, like the vibe wasn't there for me. So you knew, like, from day one. It's just the kind of social um, pressures and just things around you that kind of really, unfortunately, suppress who you think you are. It's not about <laughs> coming out as in re discovering something influenced by your environment necessarily. What? <laughs> You know, <laughs> okay, we'll take a quick break. We'll digest that. I'll reiterate the question afterwards. But people, if you are interested, as I am, in, in, in understanding kind of the, the gender sexuality dynamics of, of the world of trans, please um, join us and continue joining us as we engage in this very interesting conversation. Don't go away. Aloha. This is Winston Welch. I am your host of Out and About, where every other week, Mondays at 3, we explore a variety of topics in our city, state, nation, and world, and uh, events, organizations, the people that fuel them. It's a really interesting show. We welcome you to tune in, and we welcome your suggestions for shows. Um, you got a lot of them out there, and we have an awesome uh, studio here where we can get your ideas out as well. So I look forward to you tuning in every other week where we've got some great guests and great topics. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to come away inspired like I do. So I'll see you every other week here at 3 o'clock on Monday afternoon. Aloha. Aloha. I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, let's take healthy back. Aloha. 
Hi, back to uh, Think Tech. I'm Crystal here talking to Ava Ladner, who is a PhD student candidate um, at the UH Manoa. And uh, we're talking about her transsexuality and, and the world of it and how you, uh, as a woman, will explore these issues and challenge social norms by being who you are. Um, again, I asked you before, I don't really remember how I kind of asked it, but basically, in essence, is what do you want people to know who, who you are? Basic element. Still a person. Yes. And people kind of forget that, though. <laughs> yes. Right? But especially because of labeling, those type of things. Yeah. Um, tokenism or aggression, those type of things, right? Still a person. Where do you think all this comes from? Uh, I, this is a great question. Like, the hostility? Is that what you're um, talking about? Or the, the narrow-mindedness of people not able to see the uh, in-betweens. I, th I mean, I think it's because we've, in the modern world we've developed such a binary for everything, yes. right? Like, so, like, if you think about like all of our forms, right? This or this, yes, right? Exactly. Those type of things, and it's like it's really been codified over time. Especially, I think, like post World War II America, like it was easier that way, right? Yeah. Black and white. Yeah. Yes yeah. or no? Those, these type of things, like, and it's easier to collect data in that regard. So, like, companies like it. The government likes it. So mm -hmm. those type of things are the way I've kind of thought about it. And like anything that's a variance of their sexuality, gender, those type of things, they really frustrate the system. Yeah. And what about religion? That's a big part of it, isn't it? What about religion? It, I hate to go there, but <laughs> I, mean, I can't see it. it not affecting the way people um, develop their views on things. Absolutely. On, on right? sexuality, we're talking about. Yeah, and I think, right. And that's a really frustrated topic. Um, yeah. Especially, like, I think of. Baptists and Catholics. Have and I'm listening to the radio today about, you know, all those uh, new accusations against the Southern Baptist mm -hmm. churches. It's like, oh, God, this is so ugly. Yeah. Right. And like, oddly enough, so I teach a trans class, right? Trans studies at UH. And I had to look up like different views on like how religion intersects with some of these things. And right. I, like a group I'd never even thought about. I was like, how do the Jews view this? Right. And right. like, they're probably more open-minded than they any other. They actually are. Ones. Like even the Orthodox Jews tend to lean a little left, and they're like, "Yeah, we're huh. we're, we're pretty okay with that." Um, huh. And then, of course, the progressive and the, I guess, the middle of the road Jews. Yeah. From the from what I read, <laughs> and I, granted, I can't speak for the Jews. Right. Um, but they've all been like, "Yeah, cool, whatever." And then you see that with a lot of Christianity, where like the Episcopalians and a bunch of other ones are like, "Whatever." Um, Really? You know. Are they really whatever? Right? Yeah, they actually are, which has surprised me. And like, and there's even a, like a string of churches now that are like yeah. open and affirming, so they don't care about your gender, or your sexuality, those type of things. I think they claim it because they have to, but deep down inside, <laughs> they have judgment. I seriously do. Now let's bring in. No, we, there uh, are, I mean, there are churches that actually like we're in the pride parade, so like. There do you are, go to church? I mean, I don't know why. I have recently, so yeah. Okay. All right. So let's bring in. Okay. Which, so we touched on the yeah, sorry, the point. religious element, but let's bring in the cultural elements too. Like, how is this um, seen in different cultures? Your partner is um, uh, an Asian background, right? Yes. Yeah. So, like, how does that? Um, you mean from a conservative standpoint? Yeah. <laughs> for people who traditionally think of things like you said, binary and. Yeah, and right, and like. Especially like very patriarchal society, yes. right? Very much put double, in a box. Right? Yeah, right. So like, I think they have to acknowledge their own kind of like outside the box thinking first. Well, you think about like Chinese history. I'm thinking Chinese history, it. right? The eunuchs, you know, when they were castrated to work in the palace, and the whole kind of concept of, of course, it wasn't their choice. You know, well. this was always to serve the princesses, but uh, the, the concubines, or whatever. But um, the the concept of being androgynous has always throughout history been. It's always been there. Well, certainly, and we see that especially with ties, right? Like, yes. the, the, like the fascination with the Thai lady boys and those things. Right. Like, like, that's an element of the tourism, unfortunately, for yeah. that country. It becomes um, a spectacle, though. Right. And it's like it very much denigrates or places them as less than, right? Rather than being actual, once again, people. Yes. Um, but if we think of like extremely developed, like Japan or Korea or these type of places where it's like very structured yeah. and these type of things like this is a mess, right? Yeah. So how do you deal with that or how do you do you just you don't even go there. You just say, OK, this isn't that hard enough to crack. And um, I'm just going to do my own thing. Actually, at times it has been like that where it's like, OK, well, you dig me soon. It doesn't matter. Um, I'll let you figure it out, right? But it um, might affect you if you're involved with a relationship. No, that no, no, I agree with that. But it, like at times it's just better to be like, we're good. Have you met her parents Not yet? Not yet. Would you?
Yeah, I'm actually looking forward to it. Okay. I'm like fascinated by doing it. You're fascinated? Yeah, <laughs> what do you they, think they're thinking? I don't know yet. <laughs> do they know who you are? Barely. Do they know your... No. <laughs> <laughs> so that part will be fun, right? So you're not... A, you guys are just going to like just... You're going to show and tell, like meet meet and greet and say yeah, hi. Yeah, I think that's... Yeah. I'm, I've questioned that. I'm like, should we prep them or... Right. What? Yeah, so but it, I mean... That's so interesting. If you have a, a tactic you want to no, go maybe with, you should let me know, practice right? Those, like really old-fashioned people out of here. And well, that's what's funny. Out. Like so, like having been to like Korean restaurants, Japanese restaurants, where like there's an older presence that yeah. is probably like first generation, if not right. Yeah. Yeah. How do they proceed? Yeah, they tend to be actually really friendly. Good. Um, so I've always kind of been like, maybe that's a good barometer. Like maybe yeah. things will go all right then. Well, so. I, maybe I don't know. That's the other thing, right? That's another thing. So going forward, um, do you feel compelled that this is kind of like your almost responsibility to use this in your work? Absolutely. Um, unfortunately, as far as my project for my PhD, like I was too far along to actually incorporate this into that. Right. But I've already developed a class. I like. I see this as um, something that I'm supposed to be doing. Um, and I really kind of find joy in it um, and I th think it resonates with my students sometimes as far as like I'm just being me and therefore they think that they should be themselves too or they're encouraged to see that um, and believe in that kind of construct right um, and it doesn't mean they're all gonna come out as being anything but like that they're just a little more free right on the flip side of it is this hyper conservative binary dominant um, um, people who feel that there is no room in society for marginal identities like this. Um, wh how, what do you have to say to these people and to make them understand or to open up? Because, you know, this whole movement going forward, some people are thinking, oh, it's, it's, it's too much. It's, it's like everything is so blended now that we don't have distinguished things of who we are. It's just no, so, you, I mean, thanks. You sound like the comment section of any article that comes out anymore, right? Like, <laughs> okay. it's like you were born with... This gen tell you so that you're this, you know, there's only two genders, that type of stuff, there's only two sexes. Well, that's actually bullshit. Like, right. if you study biology, there is a range of genders, there's a range of sexualities. I mean, some even have the ability to flip. Yeah, even microorganisms. Like, right. microorganisms right. have, like, both sexes, or they can do it either so way. So, it's, it's That's it. Anyway. What? <laughs> yeah, you can. Yeah, okay. Like, I have such problem with that, and it's, yeah. it really just deals with limited capacity to yes. understand these things, right? And like they just haven't been introduced to them, but that's difficult. So how do you break down those barriers? Right, so like, I mean, I hate to be like, well, where is this taking place? But like we see it in certain parts of the country, like definitely like your Trump states and stuff like that, as far as these attitudes being prevalent. Um, yes. How do you break that down? Yeah. I don't know sometimes, considering like I think of other struggles that are still happening in those states. Right. I mean, we think of racist behaviors that exist in the South and other yeah, parts the of the country. Yeah, the crossover between racism and gender issues must be like a double whammy. Yeah, on, right. Like, just Especially think of trans people of color. I mean, they're yeah. the ones that are like, the murder rate on for them is terrible. Oh. Um, yeah, yeah. So like, I don't know. I hope that things like optics that seeing more trans people and things like film, um, other areas, like I think that I'll, I'll break for a second and say, so when I um, had started hormones and all that stuff and was getting shots every yeah. couple of weeks at the clinic, and I ran into somebody who works at the HHRC, okay. Health Hormone Reduction, here in Hawaii. Okay. Um, and she said, what do you do? And I said, well, I'm getting my PhD. And like, she was thrilled by that because like, it's a putting a trans person in a different place mm. and like says, yeah, we can do that too. Um, and like, I didn't have that vision, but she did. Right. And, and it's the, sorry to interrupt. No, go for but it. But the fact that it's not even the courses, which you're doing are brilliant, these new um, trans related courses, but you, your presence in the university is exactly what she's trying to say. Yeah. Like even just getting the PhD, not even to teaching, because I hadn't even gotten that far yet. Right. But like, she's like, we, we need you to do that. And yeah. like, and here I was like thinking that like, oh, like, yeah. I couldn't relate to her, and she yeah. sees something beautiful in it. So, and you're not doing it in a way you're like holding a big sign saying, "Hey, look, you know, <laughs> we look at me and support uh, trans talk." And it's not like that. It's, no, it's you just embodying who you are, and then going from there, and people accepting you for who you are. I mean, it sounds kind of. Actually, it sounds 
funny, but one of the things that really came along with coming out was like I actually gained a lot of confidence. So like I feel like I can be persecuted more, but yet I gained confidence. Good. Which is really kind of a weird switch, right? Like, yeah, that's the ironic thing about that. Right. So you, you mentioned earlier about resources. Do you really feel that there's an increase in the resources around, particularly in Hawaii? Well, uh, Hawaii, I think, is one of the best places. Oh, OK. Um, just because of the history here, right, of like right. Oahu, right? Yes, so like, yes. I mean, there is a cultural ingrained aspect. Um, and I think that is like actually been one of the things that's helped foment oh, okay. more resources here. Right. I mean, if you read somebody like Janet Mock's biography, like she talks about like there was a doctor here that was giving shots back in the 80s, you know, wow. those type of, or yeah, back in the 80s, um, those type of things. So they have been here for quite a while. Um, and there's a couple clinics, Planned Parenthood does shots now, things like that for both okay. male and female direction people. Um, these type of things yeah. are really helpful. Yeah, no, um, I, and people I think, don't know about it. Right, and I think there's becoming more resources, and I think there's a, I don't know, I'd say an easierness to it here. Well, it's just the beginning, <laughs> right? It's this is a kind of a slow thing going forward. But I think in light of that, I want to um, mention that we have this upcoming conference at the at University of Hawaii. I don't know if you want to do a shout out for this. It's a panel <laughs> discussion. Um, uh, at the International Graduate Student Conference, and Ava is going to be one of the panel speakers after the keynote speaker, um, Judge uh, Sabrina McKenna. McKenna. Um, and you. Yeah, I don't know how I got invited. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it's your present. So when is it? Tell people how it's open to the public, yeah? Right, this is uh, February 14th, Valentine's Day. Um, 4 30 is when the conference begins, right? Yeah, and the topic, as you can see, is gender, sexuality, and access to resources, which is really interesting and useful and necessary. Yeah, actually, so having lived in Mississippi, the access to resources is something that I um, actually am familiar with as far as there's only like two Planned Parenthoods in the state of Mississippi. Oh, gee. So like if you want those type of things, you got to go to Tennessee or one of the other neighboring states because like Tennessee has them near Memphis and stuff like right. that. But it's like, yeah, I mean, that lack of access is right. a real problem. So, you know, we're bringing out issues that aren't even on the table. And so we're kind of looking outside of the norm. And if you open your eyes to um, what's out there and seeing people as they are, um, there are lots of interesting conversations that come about. And so I think, I hope you kind of took in what um, Ava shared today. And if you want to hear more, please come to the conference. I'm going to be moderating it. And we have Ava as one of the panel um, guests. And we're going to so, rock the boat, right? We'll be hanging out again. Okay, <laughs> February 14th at the Emian Center at the UH Manoa. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much, Ava, for sharing all your personal and public life. And good luck with your um, PhD and your life in teaching and everything going forward. Thanks. I'll see you <laughs> in class. All right. <laughs> Thanks.